Hi everyone. Let's create another shader in Godot Engine. I was thinking about how we could combine the organized chaos represented by fractal Brownian motion with image post processing. The result is what you now see in the video, and we could use it in game development to simulate, for example, entering an area that negatively affects the hero's perception of reality. So let's get to programming. I don't think we'll find too many new things or original algorithms in this tutorial. It's more a combination of different elements I've already shown in earlier tutorials. It's getting harder and harder to come up with something truly original that's still at least somewhat useful in game development. So once again, I'll create a new scene, drop in the usual image from our game and apply a shader to it. Right clicking on the scene folder, create new scene user interface let's call it flow uh, noise okay and now i am dragging the image into the to the editor so the sprite 2d uh, node was automatically created and in the inspector let's cancel the centered switch in the offset category uh, expand transform and reset the position to zero zero let's display the whole picture here and scrolling down to the material section creating a new shader material clicking and creating a new shader which is called flow noise gd shader type is shader mode canvas item everything is correct let's just change the folder to uh, shaders and create and click again to open it in the shader editor Okay, and as before, we'll start by deleting what we don't need so that only the fragment function remains. Deleting vertex and deleting white. Cool. So let's get to it. The essence of our algorithm will be FBM, fractal Brownian motion, which we'll use to offset the current pixel and mix it with the original image based on certain criteria. It might sound complicated, but as I said at the start, it's just a combination of building blocks we've already used in other videos. And as I always say, whenever we work with the fractal Brownian motion, the best resource for learning more about it is the excellent online guide, The Book of Shaders, which I recommend to anyone interested in this topic. I'll add the link in the video description. So first, I'll set up the skeleton of our shader, meaning we'll start with an empty FBM function, which we'll call from the fragment function. For now, it looks like this. Uh, we'll put the actual algorithm in later. So float FBM with parameter vector to UV is uh, float. Let's call it result starts at zero. And finally, we will return the result. Uh. OK. This is correct. As for the fragment function, I'll write it right away in its final form so we can see how the elements I outlined at the beginning come together. We'll need several uniform parameters, which I'll add at the top of the code, the animation speed of the effect, the rotation radius the effect is based on, and the sharpness of the final mix. Let's do it here. Uniform, uh, <laughs> uniform float speed with a hint range and the initial value point one and let's make the speed from zero to yeah one why not and the step point and zero one the second one would be the radius so uniform float radius another hint range and here we start at point one two and it would be from uh, uh, 0 to 1 and again point zero 0.01 as the step and finally the sharpness uniform float sharpness uh, in range and <clears throat> this would start at 3 and let's make it from point 0.1 to 10 
and the step again point zero one great and now finally the fragment function as always we'll start by adjusting the aspect ratio according to the background image dimensions without this the rotation would trace ellipses instead of circles so the usual code deleting the comment and now vec2 uv is uv minus 0.5 uh, actually, we are not creating any symmetrical effect, so it wouldn't be absolutely necessary. But I still moved the origin of coordinates to the center because it will be useful when we start uh, adjusting the parameters in the inspector. We'll see for ourselves. Then the resolution. Thanks to the image, we can take it directly from texture pixel size. Okay this way and finally the recalculation as we know it's uvx is divided by resolution x divided by resolution y okay next we'll define a time variable based on the internal clock and the speed parameter float time is time times speed cool Next, or then we'll fetch the FBM value for the current pixel. Let's call it F, and it would be FBM function applied on the UV vector. Now, for mixing with the original image, to offset the pixel, we'll use sine and cosine, which ensure smooth circular, circular rotation at the defined radius. It would look like this. Vec2 offset is vec2 composed of sine of time and cosine of time this is the circular movement and multiplied by radius and radius is still too big so let's divide it by 10 multiply by 0.1 very well, now we can grab the colors at the original and offset coordinates and blend them. As the weighting factor, we'll use the F value adjusted by the sharpness parameter, like this. Vec3 color <coughs> is mix and these parameters. First one is the current pixel, so function texture applied on texture our background picture and uv capital uv this is important because if we use the lowercase uv we would uh, take coordinates from the um, from the image uh, adjusted by the aspect ratio and we don't want that we're still working with this rectangular image so uv in uppercase and rgb because we are working only with vector 3 the rgb components this is the first argument Second one, we can simply copy and paste because it's UV increased by the offset. Okay, and finally, the weight factor. Power of the F to the power of <coughs> sharpness. Uh, sorry, this is correct. The semicolon should be here. Very well. And finally, let's assign the result to the internal color which is the output of the fragment function, vector 4, uh, color, and 1 for the alpha value. Okay, at this point, we don't see any changes because the FBM function doesn't do anything yet. So F is always 0, and the mix just returns the original pixel. For the actual algorithm, we'll need some more uniform parameters for fine-tuning. Uh, it would be lacunarity, which is basically a factor defining the something like gappiness of the fractal. Then gain, which is an amplitude adjustment. And finally, octaves, which is simply a number of iterations. Let's do it. So I'm scrolling up and adding new uniform parameters. Uh, uniform float lacunarity with a hint range and the initial value for example 2 and the range would be from 0 to 10 and again the step point 0 1 then I was talking about the gain so uniform float gain another hint range and it starts at 0 0.5 
This is how we'll adjust the frequency in each iteration. Again, step point zero one, and finally octaves. And octaves, because it's an integer, we will call it <laughs> declare as integer octaves with a hint range. Uh, what did I do? Oh, sorry, hint enum no hint range. And let's start at 10 iterations from one, of course, we don't want zero iterations, 101. This is correct. Okay, and since the effect is rotation based, let's add a function for rotating by a given angle. Again, nothing new if you've been watching the previous tutorials. Met2 rotate and angle A. And now we need float. Uh, SA is sine A. Float CA is cosine A. And let's create the standard rotation matrix in two dimensions. So return mat2, which consists of two vectors, uh, CA, SA, and vec2, negative SA, CA, CA. Okay, this should be correct. Okay, and to maximize irregularity, in the blur, we'll use a pseudo-random vector generator. I'll call it uh, rotated hash to tool. Let's just write it out. Uh, vector rotated hash to tool with a parameter vec2 uv because, <coughs> because at the end we'll apply rotation for higher deformation and it takes a vector to input parameter and returns vector two as well, hence two two. Uh, sure. Okay. So let's implement it. Float time. Again, we'll need the time variable for the rotation variations, and then now the usual code, which I took from some somewhere and already used in many other algorithms. Vec two dot uv vec2 with some constants 1 2 7.1311.7 and dot product of uv vec2 um, 269.5 one and end brackets. Okay, and we also need to move it to the correct range. So it would be two times fract of sine uv times, and now a very big number for three seven five eight dot five four five three one two three. I think you can experiment with this constant and choose anything else. Just the important thing is it should return pseudo-random pseudo vectors. And finally, as I said, we will return a rotation. So rotate of time and let's make it a bit faster. So times 10 and multiplied by uv. If we want to rotate a vector uv, we multiply the matrix, uh, the rotation matrix by this vector and we'll get the rotation. Okay, as you can see, uh, we use the time variable at the rotation angle to achieve animation. And next, we'll add a parallel noise function. I'll just paste it here to avoid any typos. Okay, let's expand the window and paste it uh, right here. Uh, what did I do again? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, here. Paste it. So it is here in case you want to write it from the screen. You can do it now. All right. Now we have everything for the FBM implementation. According to the book of shaders, the algorithm is based on amplitude and frequency. So let's define their starting values. Let's do it here. Float. 
amplitude is 0.5 and float frequency is 5. Again, the result of previous experiments. Then we'll iterate through the number of octaves. So for uh, int i starts at 0, i less than octave i plus plus. Inside, we'll compute the basic fractal value. Let's call it n for noise. Float n is noise, noise applied on the UV vector multiplied by the frequency. Now, we'll multiply it by amplitude, add to the result, and then update frequency and amplitude for the next iteration. So, the result is increased by amplitude times n, the previous value. And as I said, the new values for frequency and amplitude. So, frequency is multiplied by the lacunarity and amplitude is multiplied by the gain. Very well, let's take a look at here. Okay, the result seems uh, a bit strange. So let's push it to the high range because the values are obviously too low, sometimes even negative. Where was it? Here. So instead of result, let's resolve, <laughs> return a result times 2 minus 0.5. Wait for it. Okay, it seems to be even worse than before because we need to do some other adjustments, of course. This is not everything. Now, we want to get rid of the negative values by using the absolute value here. Okay like this and this is not everything of course let's subtract it from one now it's better and you can you may even see some hints of the blur effect over there and the result um, we are um, multiplying the amplitude by n but it would be even better to enhance the fractal edges if we modify it like this times n times n okay now it's more blurry and i would say even better looking and here we have it maybe it's not the greatest algorithm of all time but it looks a bit different from our earlier tutorials so it could be a nice addition to the arsenal of 2d effects uh, of course you can play around with the parameters in the inspector and will <coughs> with certain combinations you can even get some I would say psychedelic effects. Let me try. So I am expanding here in the inspector. And for instance, if I increase the number of octaves, it should get maybe more blurry, maybe not. But sharpness, increasing the sharpness. Now we can see the pattern even better. Let's get back and the lacunarity. Now it's more grainy, now less. And I think the gain will give it this as mentioned psychedelic effect because we are emphasizing the edges even more and it is changing the colors because uh, the transformations are maybe, maybe there are too many transformations more than we would like to, but perhaps it could be useful as well. Let's revert to the original state. Thank you very much for watching. I admit I wrote this shader without diving too deeply into the subject because I'm a bit pressed for time. The reason is that the release date of my new game on Steam is approaching and at the same time I'm finishing my new book on game development in Godot Engine. I still hope to keep making tutorial videos at least once a week, but if not, I'll definitely return to them once the busy period is behind me. So take care, thank you again, good luck with your projects, and I'll see you hopefully in the next video.